There is a new documentary that's out now on Peacock. It's called Dangerous Breed, Crime, Cons, and Cats. And it centers around a story that begins with the story of Teddy Hart, who is a professional wrestler. And let me tell you, even if you are not a fan of pro wrestling, this is not, this is not stay a pro wrestling documentary. But it starts to be about the story of Teddy Hart, member of the infamous Hart family, Bret Hart, Owen Hart, Jim the Anvil Nine Hart, Stu Hart, British Bulldog, legendary family from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and his trials and tribulations in wrestling. And by the end of it, really changes its tone. The documentary begins innocently enough in 2012 with the filmmaker trying to document Teddy Hart's professional and personal life, not only in the ring as a pro wrestler, but the fact that he is a person who breeds and sells Persian cats. And if you've been following Teddy Hart, which I certainly did for a number of years, I heard many of his interviews, I have seen many videos of him, he's a guy who, yes, I know about Mr. Money, I knew about how he wanted to have a wrestling match with cats, and he wanted to be the first wrestler to ever have a dog, cat, and a horse in the ring having a match, which he said this himself. And I've also been somebody who is aware of his eclectic behavior. Teddy Hart is built unlike other people. Teddy Hart is a very unique guy. And you quickly find out from watching this that pro wrestling, if you understand pro wrestling, you know, and this is for the wrestling fans and for the non-fans, you know that it takes a certain kind of personality to get into the business of pro wrestling. You have to be a little bit different from other people, a little bit strange to get into this wacky business called pro wrestling. And Teddy Hart is maybe more than a bit strange. Here's a guy who is the personification of natural-born talent. The things I've seen Teddy Hart do in the ring, the things I have watched him do both live and on DVD is breathtaking. He has the agility of somebody like Ricochet, the coordination of somebody like a Ray Phoenix, and he is somebody who literally is the Anakin Skywalker of wrestling in the sense that he has an incredible amount of potential, but his own personal demons and his attitude has held him down. He is the youngest guy to ever get signed by WWE and also the youngest guy to ever get released because of his attitude. I remember hearing the story many years ago that supposedly they were having a training session, developmental, and he was on his cell phone talking during the training session, wasn't listening to the trainers, was doing his own thing, and that kind of gave the impression that he had a pretty bad attitude. Now, Teddy, on the documentary, you start to notice that there's something a little bit off with him. Now, I'm not a therapist, but there's definitely a chance that he either has bipolar disorder or possibly narcissistic personality disorder or something along those lines of the cluster B personality disorders. Again, I'm not a therapist. I'm friends with therapists. I've talked to therapists about this in the past. Um, so don't take my word for it. I'm not diagnosing Teddy Hart here, but... There are certain narcissistic traits that you can see even if you're not a, ther a ther therapist and there's a certain disconnect because during the documentary, and this is all filmed, he kind of goes from zero to 60 quick in the sense of he can be a nice, jokey, lovable guy to be around and then he quickly flips into being angry and belligerent. Um, and that's kind of what we see in the documentary, but it's interesting because the documentary begins with a... It's a jaw-dropping piece because it starts off being a focus on Teddy Hart, on his legacy, what he wanted, and quickly transition into the disappearance of his former girlfriend or, I guess, associate, Samantha, who she's briefly discussed in the early parts of it. It's a three-part documentary, and she is briefly discussed early, but... The third episode really begins to focus on it. The documentary is very is interestingly edited because it starts off very lighthearted, very sort of, you know, Jersey Shore-ish. In fact, the filmmaker even compares it to Jersey Shore. He says he wants to do a reality show that's like a combination of like all the great reality shows. But man, does it go dark. Does it go dark quick, let me tell you. And it starts to go into the fact that Teddy, 
might have been a bit abusive to some women, according to their testimony. He may have been abusive to them, both physically and verbally. There are stories of him trapping them and containing them and, and not letting them leave. And you hear this from multiple women. So it started to go from being this last sort of like, you know, hey, here's a quirky guy who raises cats and is incredibly athletic and is a member of the legendary Hart family and takes a quick, dark nose dive into whoa, this guy's got some demons, you know, and it quickly becomes like what the R. Kelly documentary or the Jeffrey Epstein documentary, both from Netflix, were. Because I watched those earlier this year and I thought about doing a review on them. I'm not sure if you guys would want me to hear or want to hear me talk about that. It's a very controversial thing. And I don't mind touching on controversial topics on here. I don't mind that at all, especially when it comes to that, because it's definitely something interesting that I think everybody has to take a look at. And I feel the same way about this documentary. This goes from being a documentary about a pro wrestler to being an episode of Unsolved Mysteries. The third episode really comes off like something from Dark Side of the Ring or Unsolved Mysteries. They have little reenactments and they interview different people. There were people on this that I was not expecting to see at all from the wrestling business that they talked to. There were people who had some pretty surprising things to say about Teddy. Now, by the end of the documentary, it's clear that this woman's incredibly strange disappearing act that Teddy, while he may not have been directly involved, the filmmaker makes it seem like if she had never met Teddy, it would have never happened. And there's truth to that because the way life sort of, it's something to think about too with life. The people that we meet in life can change the course of our life. You can course, take a complete different course in your life. And when she met Teddy, she wanted to become a wrestler or an MMA fighter and she came to Florida and she's Canadian. Apparently, according to the documentary, Teddy took her um, her passport and she was trapped in Florida with no identification and did some, you know, stripper work and prostitution, allegedly, and things of that nature that she was doing to make ends meet. But uh, the story is just really dark and, and scary. They interview her family. Um, the filmmaker goes through several different hard drives. He's got hours and hours and hours of, of documentation of them together and including the dark side of Teddy screaming at women, getting into fights with them publicly at restaurants. We see that here. And, you know, couples fight. That's a thing that happens. But it's very strange when you have women talking about how Teddy choked them and Teddy denies it, but he threatens to choke somebody. And then that same girl in part three comes back and she's like, no, he definitely choked me. So, it's almost like Teddy, as he's talking, lets bits and pieces of his true personality come out, which is what a lot of narcissists do. A lot of narcissists, they hide who they really are. They fabricate this perfect image of themselves, but if you talk to them long enough, you start to see the cracks. You start to see who they really are and the insecurities and the fear that's inside of them. Teddy flat out denies that he had anything to do with Samantha's appearance, but um, the fact that he even met her and brought her to Florida, in a way, you know, maybe he is somewhat responsible. I'll leave that up to you. But it's also a thing where it, the documentary felt near the latter part that it was almost walking that razor's edge of vilifying Teddy as far as, you know, there's another interview with him later where he gets very, very upset at the questioning about Samantha and... He even asked if this is going to be a documentary about her disappearance because it was supposed to be originally about his life and he wanted to do this reality show. That's what he wanted to do. This was all supposed to be a reality show and it just went completely downhill when he faced some legal troubles, which is covered in the first and second parts of the documentary. He was um, arrested for you know sexual assault and things of that nature. The women claim he did it. He denies it. Um, <clears throat> either way, there's a lot of darkness here. Like most documentaries like this are dark, but it really went a lot darker, which led to the final part, the third part of the documentary, which really becomes, like I mentioned, an episode of Unsolved Mysteries. They're tracing Samantha's whereabouts the last few months of her life, who talked to her, where she went to, who she interacted with, videos she posted on social media, and it really shows us that through websites like Facebook and Twitter, it's very hard to hide 
where you are and what you do because you have a timeline and things can be traced back. So it really opened up my eyes as far as what social media has been able to do for this type of situation. He was able to see, okay, well, Teddy said this on this day that contradicted this that he said now. And there's a lot of times where Teddy gets caught straight up lying. And again, that does not necessarily mean that he was the one that hurt Samantha or he put her in a position to be hurt. That's not necessarily the case, but it definitely shows that he may know more than he's willing to give away, which is what I think is suspected by the filmmaker. So this was chilling. This was, you know, a documentary that I felt was very eye-opening. You know, I've always known Teddy Hart to be a little, little on the edge, but this really put him in a new level, and it's something that everyone needs to watch today, whether or not you're a fan of wrestling, because it's not even about wrestling. There's a few wrestling clips here and there. There are things you learn, but it's not about that. It's about a guy who has, in many ways, hurt other people. Whether you believe he did or not, that's up to you. I mean, the, the women testify on here. Um... You know, he's hurt people and he may have maybe gone a bit, maybe he, he, he destroyed a life that, maybe he took a woman down a path that wound up to her life being destroyed. I mean, I don't know. I've always found Teddy really entertaining, um, but I've always wondered, like, is he just putting on an act? Is he in character or is he really a little bit on the edge? And this is the real Ted Hart, Teddy Annis. And you even meet his family and everything. So it's a really, really great documentary. Check it out. Uh, I'm really wondering what the fallout is of this because Teddy may have a comment when this comes out. Um, we may hear some legal things going on. There may be an investigation. And that's something else too. This really shows that a lot of times, and this is something that I've talked to with my friends a lot. A lot of times, man, the police don't give a damn. You, if you there's, if there's a missing person it might not necessarily be at the top of their to-do list. And that, to me, is kind of fucked up. But it is what it is. Anyways, check out the documentary. It's not that long. Every episode's an hour long, and there's three episodes on Peacock right now. It is not co-produced by WWE, although Kevin Dunn is a producer because he provides footage, but it's not a WWE documentary, So, but it is on Peacock, so it won't be in the WWE section, it'll be in the Peacock section. Take care, and I'll talk to y'all soon.